This will be our last writing prompt video covering our calling to bear fruit. And we thought about actually starting with this one because so many times in the Bible when we enter into the stories of men and women of faith, we actually began at their calling to bear fruit. We look at the story of Jeremiah. Um, it says, the word of the Lord came to him. He said, before I formed you, in your mother's womb, I knew you, I set you apart, I appointed you to be a prophet to the nations. We look at David, when he comes onto the scene, we see him being called, anointed to be king. When we see Jesus um, coming to Peter, the very first thing that he says to him is not the great commandment, love me and love your neighbor. The, the very first thing is not correcting his sin. The very first thing is, come, I'll make you fishers of men. When we see Mary, we see her call to bear um, the, the child that would be Jesus. And we, over and over again, we enter into people's stories through this context of how they're called to bear fruit. I think from the very, very beginning, God has called us into work and rest that will bear fruit. It starts right in the garden as, as Adam and Eve were called to tend and to care for and to steward God's creation. And so all of us are called to bear good fruit. And in fact, in John 15, it says that this is the proof that we are his disciples, that we bear great fruit. One of the things that can happen when we go through seasons of, of disappointment or disillusionment um, is that we can feel like that we're not, that we're really just not bearing fruit. And, and God, I believe, wants to remind us in this writing time that he has called us to bear good fruit. And good fruit looks a lot of different ways. It looks like leading people into the knowledge of Jesus. It looks like being a testament of love to your neighbor. It, 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 um, it can look like wisdom that you provide to somebody or care that you provide to somebody in a tough situation. It can be in the way you worship in your, in your, in your, in your vocation, in your labor. Um, we're all called to work in a way that bears good fruit. And John 15 leads us kind of through all of these facets of the calling. We're called into the vine. There are other branches, which are other, you know, believers. We're called to follow the commands. But the, but the proof of being a disciple is that we would bear fruit. And ultimately, he says, I told you all these things so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. When we um, abide in God and we bear fruit, there is joy that fills our life. But all of us are going to bear fruit differently. All of us have different gifts. We have different people that we're called to. But the fruit that is in our life, one of the easiest ways to get distracted is to think of fruit as something for me. Um, but fruit it, on a tree is to nourish everything around it. And so we bear fruit for others to testify to the goodness of God. And... I get opportunities a lot to talk to people about Jesus, and it's a way that God's called me to bear fruit. And I think that's the way all, God's called all of us to bear fruit. But also, um, there, there are opportunities in the business world for me to worship in a way that actually calls people to taste and see that the Lord is good. That's really our hope, is that in our lives and in our calling, God would help us to taste and see that He is good um, in, in the same but different way that he used Jeremiah, that he used P Peter, that he used David, that he used Paul. As we look at these testimonies, and particularly the testimony of Jesus, we can see that God has called every single person to bear fruit. And so the questions here will help you look at how God has already led you into a life of bearing good fruit and um, being a witness to his love and my hope is that you will find language that will help you see particularly who he's called you to be in bearing good fruit.